Why is the United States on the verge of a permanent blackout? Is this a shadow of what will happen in the final days? Welcome to Truth in Bible Prophecy. Kindly subscribe and like this video. Here is the end time prophecy alert that you should know. Colossians 1 verse 13 for He rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son. Is the coming world blackout a conspiracy or prophecy? Jesus warned us that in the final days, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Nations will rise against nations, tons of wars and rumors of wars. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. And these powerful men can now create nuclear weapons that can destroy the world. How a potential EMP, electromagnetic pulse, attack on the U.S. could permanently take out the electric grid, wiping out your power, and why it's a realistic possibility. A nuclear 9-11 on the U.S.? Who would most likely attack? Russia, China, or North Korea? We begin with the possibility of a devastating attack on the U.S. that could affect your home. But what would happen if the United States lost electricity permanently? Electromagnetic pulse bomb experts warn America's enemies are already getting ready to launch such a strike. And Gary Lane explains why one expert believes such an attack is inevitable. An electromagnetic pulse bomb, or EMP, is a nuclear weapon designed to explode high up in the atmosphere and knock out a country's electrical power grid. Hits the Earth's surface, feeds into our electrical wiring, it starts shorting out the entire power grid. If they launch three missiles, eastern, central, western United States, it would shut our grid down permanently. However, Forstchen believes North Korea is the more likely culprit. Nuclear weapons expert the late Peter Pry agreed. Five years before his death in 2022, Pry warned that Kim Jong-un's launch of a high-altitude ballistic missile was a test of North Korea's EMP capabilities against the United States. The Japanese and South Korean military uh, both described it as practicing for an EMP attack because it was uh, it was burst on ascent deliberately by the North Koreans when it was at an altitude so above 71 this. kilometers. Cars would be paralyzed. Airplanes could fall out of the sky. You'd have natural gas pipeline explosions, nuclear reactor overloads. Why do you think this is likely even imminent? Sooner or later, somebody's going to try to do this. I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, but at some point it will happen. Not only that China has built its artificial sun and we've discovered its endearment to sun worship, rooted in sun worship, China has also built an artificial moon that stimulates low gravity conditions on Earth. China has built a research facility that simulates the low gravity environment on the moon and it was inspired by experiments using magnets to levitate a frog. The tests completed in the chamber will be used to inform China's lunar exploration program called Change, which takes its name from the Chinese goddess of the moon. Startling to see powerful nations seek to recreate what God has made. We are living in the final days, and the devil is always at work in bringing the whole world to darkness. The sanctuary tells a prophetic story of how the devil works through the Antichrist. Daniel 8 verse 9, And out of one of them came a little horn. He even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Friends, let us dive into the journey, into the sanctuary, and learn how God restored light from the dark ages blackout. A prophetic question was raised concerning this dark ages. Daniel 8 verse 13, How long will it take for the vision to be fulfilled? The vision concerning the daily sacrifice, the rebellion that causes desolation, the surrender of the sanctuary, and the trampling underfoot of the Lord's people. Answer verse 14, 
it will take 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary will be restored. The longest time prophecy that begins in 457 BC and ends in 1844. Let us follow God's GPS, gospel plan of salvation, truth and life restored in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary, the table of showbread. In the 1300s, a man by the name of John Wycliffe comes upon the scene. He is the founder of a movement called the Low Lords. He translated the Bible into Latin to the common language of the people. John Wycliffe effectively restored the table of showbread. The Word of God. In the 1400s, a man by the name of Martin Luther, a man that begins what's known as the Protestant Reformation. He is the founder of the Lutheran movement. He restores the art of sacrifice. He says, the Bible teach we don't have to buy forgiveness, indulgence, and Christ's sacrifice is sufficient for the forgiveness of our sins. In the 1500s, another man by the name of John Calvin comes upon the scene, the founder of the Presbyterian movement. And he has a special burden for prayer, saying we don't need to go to the priests and popes to get forgiveness of sins we can directly pray to Jesus Calvin effectively restores the altar of incense in the 1600s a man by the name of John Smith comes upon the scene along with Roger Williams became known as the founder of the Baptist movement they preached the biblical baptism by immersion restoring the labor in the 1700s, a man by the name of John Wesley comes upon the scene. The founder of the Methodist movement, Wesley has a special burden. He believes that every individual is an evangelist. Everybody is supposed to be the light of the world. And he begins this missionary societies and sending people out to evangelize, restoring the seven branch candlestick. All of these furnitures in the sanctuary tells God's story of restoration. And it was present truth in their day. Proverbs 4 verse 18, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. God does not give all the brightness and light to one man, but rather the truth shines and shines brighter until the culmination, the end of 1844. At the end of 1844, God will bring a movement into existence, having all the truth restored by the reformers and keeping of God's law, including the fourth commandment, the Sabbath, William Miller, Samuel Snow, Ellen White, and Mary Reform believe that the sanctuary to be cleansed is on earth which takes place in October 22, 1844. But they were disappointed. The sanctuary to be cleansed is in heaven, where the Son of Man meets the ancients of days, God the Father, for Jesus' final ministry in the most holy place, Daniel chapter 7. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, a movement that believes in righteousness by faith, sola scriptura, baptism by immersion, evangelism, and mission, intercession of Christ in our prayer, the Adventist Church, restored the Ark of the Covenant, the Ten Commandments, God's commandment end time people. The book of Revelation is a love story between a faithful bridegroom and his bride. And very soon, they will be reunited in the second coming of Christ. Only through his blood, we can overcome. Kindly type in the comment section, I will be a citizen of heaven. Kindly share this timely, encouraging video. Like this video and may we all continue to seek truth in Bible prophecy.